Quarter past 11, hanging out with Mr. Bosonke. Ricky Rick, welcome to the house of Poppy. Been meaning to get you on. Hello, yeah. hello. Hey, hey, what up, what up? Excuse, my, excuse my voice, it's just a bit raspy. Oh. From the weekend, the weekend was very hectic. Oh, was it rough? But it yeah, was, it was good, rough, huh? It was a rough one, but it was good. <clears throat> you know, we did everything that we we're meant to do. Let's so, get yeah. straight into it. Let's Sush and in. I were like, we we love the tune Bosonke, we love the album, but we kind of need a Bosonke 101. So we have like bits and pieces of the song that we know. Yeah, so, yeah. Right, yeah. We sing right, along. Right, so right, can right, you right. give us a bit of the chorus? Can we just quickly? Just get the chorus down, then we can move on with life. Okay. You want me to say how it goes? Yeah, teach okay, us. Okay, children. Okay, yes, let's do it like this, children. <laughs> we start when we just go. Say, we say, one, two, three, four. <laughs> boss zonke, boss nonke, gananda, ba unehaba. Kwa mashu na simlazi, umswenko bayamazi. Hey, usaba anu sema sababs. For everyone who doesn't know what that means. Usaba anu sema sababs. That means... What, what are you afraid of you, when you're in the <laughs> suburbs? When you're in the nice, and uh, not the suburbs that we're used to, the nice suburbs. What a tune, dude. Um, yeah. I'm sure you've, you've raked in the success of such a, a massive tune. In fact, I remember the first time I heard this on radio, it was on Cosmos Show. Yeah. And she played it as a jam of the day on the House of Poppy. And I was just like, I just want to be part of this. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. be in there. Yeah. Did you know that it was going to be a hit, a smasher? Um uh, pretty, pretty, mu- pretty much. It was made for that. It was pretty much made for people just to enjoy. I think all, uh, my other music was so intense that I just needed something relaxed and chill that people could just vibe to. So that I was specifically doing it for people to enjoy. Just to have are fun. you one of them deep people? Yeah, I'm very deep. I'm very deep. So oh, deep. Oh snap! So I would deep. never have said that from our <laughs> last conversation. Yeah, it's so deep. <laughs> well, we're gonna be hanging out with you. If you've got any questions for Ricky Rick, please holler back. Oh eight nine double one double oh five oh. Five. He's sporting a a beard. Man after my heart. Uh, you know I'm into beards these days. I'm just saying. I've heard. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> you heard it through the grapevine. Well, it's the truth. You look good. So you said you look manicured. That was, <laughs> those were her words. So I'm not the only one that's that's looking at you. You no know. wonder she was looking at me so close. I was wondering, like, what's going on here? <laughs> staring into Why your she eyes. Staring, not even in my eyes. She's staring at the bottom of my chin. I'm wondering what is what's going on here. Boys with beards, that's yeah. what's going down. Ricky Rick 5 FM next. Okay, so I I said earlier on that uh Ricky Rick is rocking this whole can I call you a lumbersexual? Lumbersexual. <laughs> yeah, man. What is okay, let me guess. That's like a lumberjack type swag. Yeah. Lumb, but like, like you the, could if I were to drop you in the middle of a forest yeah. um with your beard you'd be able to survive. You'd chop wood and you'd make it look super sexy and you'd, like I'd run into you with a bit of, you know, wolf on your back on some, yeah, honey, I'm home. Are you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> is this because of the beard? It's because of the damn beard. Hey, listen, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything you were saying possible. earlier on that uh, people have just woken up to the power of the beard and I'm one of those people because yeah. if you'd asked me two years ago yeah. if I found a beard sexy, I would have said nah. Yeah. But... Look at this in front of me now. Oh. It just looks so good. It's I, manicured, like Sush said. Look, I do have some other features, uh, you know, uh, that uh, are quite uh, pleasant. Uh. But um, <laughs> look, I'll take the beard one for now. <laughs> Oh, but man. Uh, man, I don't know. It's like everyone's crazy about the beard right now. For me, it's like a mission because I've, I've got to, you know, shave it up and, you know, trim it properly. i got to do like all the, you know, all the nitty gritties that we're not meant to be worrying about. i got to do. As a guy. As man. a guy. And, yeah, yeah. And, you, you need know? to keep it together. Gotta well, it's it working together. for you. Oh, why, thank you. Um, So we spoke a couple of months ago, you and I, just getting to know each other because we haven't really had a, a conversation. And you told me that you were this whole generation of of guys that kind of discovered four ways as it was up and coming, which yeah. is a suburb in Joburg. But yeah. you were part of this whole skateboarding crew. Mm. You were on your Pharrell swag. It was mm. all cute and stuff. Yeah. Can you talk us through your childhood and the phases that you went through? Because everyone goes yeah. through that where they think they're so cool in the gang. They're on skateboards. Yeah. They're going to malls and they're like, yeah. yeah, we're going to go check out our movie brew. We're mm. so cool. Mm. Um, talk us through that for you. What was it like? Um, um, what phases did you go through? Um, man, there were so many phases. Uh, you know, well, the first phase was most probably the 
the the stealing the hooch out of your parents' uh, out of your parents' cupboard. I don't you know if you guys know about hooch. You were part of the hooch generation. I don't know if you know about hooch, <laughs> but we're doing the hooch yeah. thing. We thought we knew everything, you know, with the ESP CDs. We used to keep the bottles because we thought they were so cool. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> that was the thing, you know. Is ESP still alive? Is it still such a thing as ESP? I think it is. It's just you not know, as big. the ESP CDs. You know, that was when I was first introduced into the ho- into house. Well, okay. At that time, it was called Drave. And with the black jack jeans and uh, you know what I'm saying? Yo, the bomber you, jacket. Yeah, I wanted the bomber jacket. They never got me the bomber. <laughs> but uh, I got you, one now. Do the sleeveless jackets. No, I didn't, you, the, I didn't do this. I didn't do this. If it was cold, you put the sleeves. <laughs> put the sleeves all the way up. <laughs> all that. And then, you know, went into, and then, you know, traveled, traveled around the world, you know, got introduced to hip hop and, uh, you know, went. Oh, so went, when was that introduction for you into hip hop? Uh, I feel my, like it my came late. Introduction to hip, my introduction to hip hop was really in grade four. Okay. Grade four, the time we called And what was your four. first ever hip hop album? My first hip hop album was a bit earlier. I mean, my uncle used to play Tupac. That's all he used to play. So all we knew was Tupac and and not even Mm B.I.G. B.I.G. wasn't so big for us. All we knew was Tupac. We thought Tupac was like, you know, anything hip hop, it was Tupac. Did you tie the bandana? Of course, I had the bandana. Listen, we had the bandana with the dungaree, with the with the one dungaree (laughs) strap falling on the side. (laughs) Everybody did that. You know what I mean? We've got a call for you on the line. Uh, Hello, five. Who's this? Sean, how are you guys doing? Good, thank you. You want to chat to Ricky Rick, you may? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky Rick, how are you, my dog? Hi, Sean. Yeah, tell me something. What offered this new sound of music that you've now sort of created and make it your own? What, um, in terms of singles or in terms of the, the stuff that's on the album, Family Values? Yeah, more of just the just simple sound because mm-hmm. you've obviously brought something completely different and unique compared to what SA Hip Hop sounds like. Yeah, Most yeah. of the guys nowadays are making it like American sound yeah. and you've sort of taken your roots and just made it how it is. Hey, yeah. Sean, good Sean, question, nice my man. One. Well, sure, I, I think, Sean, there's two things, man. Like, um, I think with, w- w- there's one thing of always giving people what they want to hear, you know, and that we can we know by what's radios playing and what they're supporting. And then the other thing, you know, there's a whole bunch of people that still need to discover how, you know, how they're going to navigate, which sounds they like. And so my whole thing was that I never wanted to make any two songs that sound the same, mm-hmm. whether it's from the influence or from, you know, from the vibe. I don't I didn't ever want to make two songs that sound exactly the same. And they're for different people. That means, you know, different people can mess with my music because of that. Fantastic. Well, we're going to be playing a game of Would You Rather, the Family Values Edition. Are yes. You, are you in? Okay, let's do it. You have no choice but to be in. Ricky Rick on 5 FM, Mr. Boss Zonke in the house. We'll take more of your calls, questions next.